page. Welcome everybody to our second Indivisible Text Ledge live uh, streaming. We are really excited about this project that we've started uh, to get information to you uh, and to just share, you know, different ways that you can be involved and also to learn about uh, different uh, pieces of information that are really important when it comes to the state legislature and how uh, it's impacted and how we can impact it. Uh, so last time we talked about the election and upcoming state ledge. Uh, today I am joined by the amazing Robert Norris. He is a part of the Indivisible Text Ledge organizers, uh, serving currently as our education huddle lead, uh, as well as just research extraordinaire. And we're going to talk about the census today. But first, before we jump into the census, um, Robert's going to share a little bit about uh, his background. So Robert, welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about, tell everybody a little bit about uh, your amazing experience with State Ledge. Well, sure. Thank you very much. Um, well, back in 2017, I retired from the state. And uh, for about 30 years, I had worked at the Legislative Budget Board, which, as its middle name implies, is all about the budget and how it is funded through the legislature. So I worked there for about 30 years as a budget analyst. And what that meant was that I helped the legislature make uh, funding decisions during each legislative session, happens every two years. And then in between the sessions during the interim, I monitored state agency spending and communicated that to the legislature. Well, after that period, after I retired, I decided, you know, I really ought to put my experience to use. Uh, I found out about Indivisible Text Ledge um, joined it and then uh, working with it, uh, as Alex was saying, became uh, the lead for the education huddle. I uh, want to also say that uh, my wife and I are members of our local indivisible group, Rosedale Huddle. Shout out to Rosedale Huddle. Um, Rosedale. And, yeah, Rosedale. Okay, yeah. So, uh, uh, by the way, uh, just to get our locations, I'm in Austin. That's where Rosedale is. Uh, Alex is in Fort Worth. So um, let me start off just, you know, what we're going to talk about today. It's going to be all about the census. Uh, and first of all, we both want to stress, if you haven't completed and submitted your census form, either online, by phone, or by mail, do it now. This is so important because we're getting down to the last 10 days. The deadline, which has been, you know, moved forward, is now September 30th. That means the end of the month. So if you haven't, if you know anybody else who haven't turned in that questionnaire, get it done right away. So what we're going to do in this presentation is we're going to sort of like fill in the blanks um, in your census awareness. You, uh, you may uh, feel like you know everything the census. Uh, maybe you do. But uh, we think this presentation is going to provide you with some valuable information. So let's get started. Uh, exactly what is the census? Well, every 10 years, the United States Constitution requires that everyone living in the United States, whatever status, living in the United States is counted once and only once in the right place. Now this includes the questionnaire that we're gonna talk about that asks for personnel and household demographic information. These questionnaires are then used to provide data for the census report. And why is it done? Well, the US Constitution requires that everyone in the country be counted every 10 years. The first census was actually done in 1790 when George Washington was president, a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> a long, a that long time. Much different process. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was. Uh, the census, of course, is used to determine some important factors, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Yeah, so thinking about how the census has probably changed, we're doing this every 10 years. We've been doing it since 1790 uh, in the United States. Um, there's most likely a lot of different options for us to be able to complete this now versus what it was before. Absolutely. So we're going to take a kind of a deep dive and talk about how exactly the census is done. 
Well, between March 12th and March 20th of 2020, households received a mailed invitation to respond to the census online. So, and areas that were less likely to respond online received a paper questionnaire along with their invitation. Uh, that invitation also included information about how to respond by phone. Then between the latter part of March and the end of April, the Census Bureau sent out a series of letters and postcards reminding people, please send in that questionnaire. Uh, <clears throat> then at the end of April, those who hadn't sent in their questionnaire were actually provided a paper version that they could send in. Finally, at the end of May, for those households that had not completed and sent in their questionnaire, the census employed and sent out census takers, what were known as enumerators, who go around to households where they have non-respondents and to get that information right then and there in person. Um, so, so it's, far, uh, we've had a, a decent amount of time to try to fill this out. Um, people may have been getting a lot of mail around the census, phone calls, even visitors at this point. Uh, and even though we've had a lot of time since March, we're, we're still dealing with a shortened time frame versus what we are used to. Um, but the most important aspect about all of this is that we are one week away. So all of those opportunities uh, that they've been reaching out to you, um, we want to try to get it done in this next week. Well, that's really true. Uh, fortunately, there are uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, some local governments who have been really helping to push the, uh, the census completion along. Um, I know in our area, uh, there's a organization that's um, trying to work and make sure that um, questionnaires are submitted from the uh, Latino population. There's, so that's really important. Um, now, okay, so why does all of this matter? Um, well, okay, once these questionnaires are submitted, there's all this data. And what happens with this data? Well, the data is used to allocate federal funds to state and local governments. And we're talking about literally tens of billions of dollars. The biggest one is Medicaid. We know how important Medicaid is to low-income households. Well, that's provided partly by federal funds. It also provides funding for uh, low-income schools, for meals, um, for road building, just a whole host of things. Um, and, you know, the, the, the one thing along with this is the original one, and that is congressional um, reapportionment, so that there's a new information there about what state population is, and that's how they determine how many house seats there are. This becomes that all important conversation labeled redistricting that exactly. is floated around a lot. A lot of people are talking about it. It's directly tied to the census data and why we need to complete this. Exactly. Um, redistricting is its whole world unto itself. We're not going to get into that in this presentation, probably in a latter one, but. Um, it's so important to make sure that all those communities are counted correctly. So at least there'll be a, a, a good effort to not only reapportion, but do redistricting. So we are not only in a shortened um, time frame than maybe what we're typically used to, um, or at least what has been changed recently in terms of the deadline being September 30th, but uh, not that we need to remind everybody, but we are in the middle of a pandemic still. And so COVID-19 has brought in a whole lot of different adjustments and, and problems in terms of trying to get this done. How is, you know, what are some things that we could talk about in terms of how COVID-19 impacted this process and why this last week is so important for us to get across the finish line and getting it submitted? Well, of course, you know, doing it online is, uh, you know, was thought to be a, a great way to address the challenge of getting the questionnaires in, you know, during this pandemic. Um, and that's, you know, that's generally true, 
Uh, we're going to see in just a minute that Texas is not really in great shape in terms of, of uh, self-response. Uh, the other methods, you know, paper, turning it in, and by phone, I'm sure those are good, but <clears throat> those two have challenges during COVID. Uh, as I was saying a minute ago, it's those organizations that are really, really help so much, and as well as the enumerators in trying to fill in the gaps and trying to uh, address those challenges that have come up with census taking during the COVID period that we're in. So we have addressed the importance of the census, why this needs to be done, why, why you're being contacted so many times, family members and friends. And really the first step is to complete the census, whether it's the paper uh, option to be able to submit it via paper, a phone call online or through a census taker or enumerator that comes to your door. The key is that you get it done for yourself and, and your family, anybody in your household um, that would be included in your account. Um, there are some other things that, that we can do. Um, Robert's mentioned organizations that are helping get the census completed in all various communities. Uh, if this is something you wanna to try to help out in this final week reach out locally, find those organizations that are doing that amazing work, local governments, and that way you can help get that census account done. Once again, the focus is all around the election that's coming up November 3rd, early voting starting you know, October 13th. But before that happens and before the all important ledge session that comes January, 2021, we have the census and we have one week to go right now as it stands. And so we wanna make sure everyone is taking part in that. Um, another big thing that we'd like to share, uh, and Robert, let me know if there's anything else you wanted to make sure and, and throw in there before we jump to some of the resources we wanna share with everybody. No, let's go ahead. All right. So we wanna share, we're gonna start off visiting the um, Indivisible uh, website. So we're gonna go there let me see get back to sharing screen. I can do this. All right. So here's the Indivisible Text Ledge website that we shared with you the other day, and we'll continue to share with you because it has so many great resources within it uh, and things that we're, we're getting people um, information to be able to utilize and, and share with their community. We're going to go right in the middle here where it says the census and take a look at all the information that's been accumulated. Really, if you need more details, want more information, this is a great place to go to. Uh, starting off, we link it to the 2020 Census government website. Uh, dive into a lot of the information uh, that Robert shared in terms of why it's important, but also have materials in English and Spanish that can be shared that the census has created. Videos, if you want to share um, the government's uh, census videos and kind of walking through uh, all the important reasons to complete it, as well as if you want to share the Indivisible Text Ledge live stream that you're looking at right now, uh, you can do that too. Uh, so a lot of great information uh, in how it affects um, our communities. But specifically, we want to also go into the Texas effort um, that is being completed. And really, Texas Counts is the organization that has been doing an amazing job leading in this work. And so within our website, we link to their website and right away you see the countdown uh, for the self-response deadline is one week away. Uh, and within their website, they have a couple of events and trainings that are happening. On September 25th, they have a Texas Counts Outreach Hour. So if that's something you're interested in participating in, uh, you can join that as well as the Texas Counts Update. Uh, their next one is September 28th from 12 to 1, and they just do a great job of presenting uh, where the data is at, what the impact of that data is, and how uh, you can help get involved to try to get uh, census completed before this deadline. Uh, real quick, though, they also have a where we are. Uh, so 72.8% total Texas enumeration as of today. The self-response rate as of today is 59.4%. Um, and right now, Texas ranks 39 out of the 50 states. And so, of course, in Texas, we love to be number one. If 
if we can. It's unlikely we'll be number one for the census, but we have a week to really make up some ground and to try to get a little bit higher uh, in, in this ranking so that more Texans are counted uh, as a part of the census. You know, this has been, this has had a, some controversy as well. There was, you know, uh, a case that had to be reviewed in, in terms of ad adding a citizenship question, um, which was fought through the court system. Um, and, and there's just been a lot of changes in terms of, of you know, the deadlines and information that's out there um, due to COVID and due to priorities uh, that the administration is wanting to, to switch, the Trump administration is wanting to switch for the census. So um, don't miss this opportunity to get counted, to get your household counted, family and friends counted, because the dollars associated with the census, the data associated with the census is so important for us to be able to uh, work within our communities over the next 10 years. Uh, Robert, is there anything else you want to add to everybody for the census um, conversation that we've been having today, which thank you so much for all the great work you, you helped in researching and providing for us today. Well, uh, thank you very much, Alex. I, I think um, this is important information. Uh, Texas Counts is really um, a leader in helping people understand what's happened so far, uh, what they can do to help in the future. So uh, encourage everybody to go to that website as well as look at the individual text ledge website for lots of other different uh, resources that they can tap into. So let's get that census done. If you've already completed the census, uh, let us know in the comments. Um, like we said, make sure and share it with your uh, family members, um, with your friends so that we can get it done. Um, and Texas can get as many counted as possible before this deadline is through. Uh, and if you have any questions about census, ask in the comments as well. We'd be happy to answer those questions or, or get the information to you uh, by connecting you with, with other organizations. Hope everyone continues to have a great week. Uh, we are excited to do these live sessions and we will be back with you soon. Thank you.